Hi guys! I was working on some lesson plans for my students for this school year and I pulled up Flipgrid and was going through my topics and I thought I would go ahead and do a quick video to show you what Flipgrid is and show you what I do with it. So I'm going to move my face around. Well, maybe not too much. First thing is first, once you get in here, you have this really nice link to a getting started guide. If you've never ever used Flipgrid before, I would highly recommend this guide. Um, they have nice webinars that you can watch. Um, they also have some really good videos for how to get yourself started and how to get kids started on Flipgrid. Um, in a lot of situations, kids have used Flipgrid at some point, but if they haven't, this is gonna help you introduce it to them and introduce it to the families. Um, so there's that. Now I'm going to go back to my grids. Okay, so think about a grid as a file drawer and the topics within the grid as individual files, individual assignments that you have the students doing. For example, let's see, I'll pick one. Yeah, let's do this fifth grade music. So um, if you've watched my other videos, you know I teach conversational solfege. One of the ways that I do that in a distance learning environment is I do it on Flipgrid. So let me see if I can pull this up. These currently don't have any videos in them because the school year hasn't started yet. So let's go to reading rhythms. So what I've done is I've written out the directions, decode the rhythms with rhythm syllables, and then I've attached the unit two patterns. So they click on this. It'll come up. There are my unit two patterns. And then their job is to record a video of themselves reading those patterns. And that's something that we do regularly in class. So they know what I mean when I say decode the rhythms with rhythm syllables and they're easily able to do that. Now let's go back to my grids and I'm gonna pull up my test class here. Let's say I want to add a new topic, but I don't, I'm looking for something about world music. I want to find something. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I want to find something. Flipgrid has this really nice thing called the Disco Library. And if you click, you can either click right here or you can click up here on Disco Library. So these are all topics ideas, lessons created by members of the Flipgrid community and sponsors. So if you come down here, they've got some really neat things. I like, let's do Wonderopolis. So that's gonna take me down to Wonderopolis. And actually the first one is a really cool science lesson. So it was created by Wonderopolis. It's got an article, it's an article and then a response to the article. So I really like this. I think it's gonna work great for my students. I'm gonna add it to my test class. That's the grid I wanna add it to. And it will automatically populate all of those informational boxes for uh, creating your topic. And I can go in here and change anything I want to. So if I want them to answer a different question or I want them to answer more than one question, I could. I can also change the amount of time that they have to record from 15 seconds up to 10 minutes. So one minute and 30 seconds is what it defaults to and I'm probably gonna keep it at that because I think that'll be a good amount of time, plenty of time for them to get their thoughts in to a video. Now I always turn on video moderation because that allows me to view the videos before they're posted publicly on my Flipgrid. Um, and by publicly, I mean only the kids, the students that are in the Flipgrid can see it. Nobody else can see it, just the kids and me. Um, and I'm gonna leave this picture, it's fun. I'm not gonna put a topic tip. It's got automatically puts the attachment in there and I'm gonna make it active because I want them to theoretically go ahead and start working on it. I'm gonna give them one week. So we'll do the 21st to the 28th. 
These are all options for your videos. I usually let them do selfies and videos. Um, I don't always do views because I don't think that's necessarily relevant. Um, if they're really feeling dangerous, I let them edit their videos. They can attach things. Um, I do let students like other students' videos because I think it's a really good thing for them to get feedback from their friends. And then feedback, you can customize this for the way that you want. I usually use basic feedback unless I'm looking for a specific criteria, and then I'll do my custom feedback. I'll move my head. Now I'm gonna hit update topic. And now my topic is populated in my grid for Miss Helsley's music class, and it's ready for kids to record responses. So all they have to do is click this wonder of the day. And they're gonna go through this article and read it. And I really like Wonderopolis because it's got um, words to learn, um, links to other items. It's pretty interactive and the language is pretty good for fourth grade, fifth grade even sixth or seventh. And it gives you some ideas at the bottom. So they can read this and then they're gonna go back to here and they're gonna record a response. So the video is gonna come up for them. They're gonna hit record, record their response to this uh, topic and then it will post and then I will look at it and give them feedback. So. That's a quick down and dirty way of using a Flipgrid. Um, if you have specific questions about Flipgrid, I'll see if I can get, um, I'll see what I can do because I don't want to violate students privacy or anything like that. So um, we might be able to do a group test so you guys can see how it works. But I would definitely recommend going to the Get Started Guide and going through all of the videos and all of the information that they have there because that um, is really helpful for setting things up. So I hope this helped um, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.